Oh, hello there, grade six writer. This is a video all about cool crafty commas and how to use them to become a better, more awesome writer. Let's just take a quick peek at this cartoon. I love it. It never fails to make me giggle. And it's a good reminder of how important proper commas are. They are like the yellow lights in traffic. They tell us when to slow down and get us where we need to go. And they help us not eat grandma. So that's good too. This is part one of two. Uh, in this quick little video, we're going to be talking about joining two separate ideas together with commas and also separating items in a list, which many of us are also really good at. This is just a little refresher for that aspect of comma use. Let's first start by looking at joining two ideas together. This first idea, Miss Simon loves to dance with unicorns. So when writing longer sentences, it's normal to have many ideas living together in the same sentence. Uh, this first idea stands on its own. It's grammatically correct. The second idea, Miss Simon only dances with unicorns on Tuesdays after school, is also a complete idea. You could say this, it's a complete sentence, and it's grammatically correct. Uh, you could use these together in, a, in two different sentences and still communicate the same thing. Miss Simon loves to dance with unicorns. Miss Simon only dances with unicorns on Tuesdays after school. The reason why we combine them together is because it has better flow in a sentence, especially in a paragraph if you have a lot of shorter sentences. It's nice to combine some ideas together into one sentence to make your ideas a little bit more flowy and smoother. So we can combine them together like this. Miss Simon loves to dance with unicorns, but only on Tuesdays after school. We need to put a comma in there somewhere to make this sentence make sense. So we always put it before the joining word in a sentence. And in this case, the joining word is but. It wasn't in either of the two independent sentences and the but makes only the Tuesdays after school part make sense. So the whole sentence is, Miss Simon loves to dance with unicorns, but only on Tuesdays after school. And that comma joins together those two ideas. It's like the glue holding them together. Let's try this with another one. The first idea, the dancing ninjas took a special liking to Miss Campbell. Idea number two, the ninjas taught Miss Campbell all their sweet dance moves. So we could use a number of joining words to bring these two ideas together. The dancing ninjas took a special liking to Miss Campbell, so they taught her all their sweet dance moves. Now just like the last example, we put the comma before the joining word, we're gonna do it again here. The dancing ninjas took a special liking to Miss Campbell, so they taught her all their sweet dance moves. If this is the one rule you remember and plant it into your brains right now, we always, always, always put the comma before the joining word. Here are some other examples for you to practice with. The grade six students were exhausted, so their teacher started a dance party. Take a moment, you can pause the recording, and try and figure out where you would put the comma. Here's the first idea. The grade six students were exhausted. The second independent idea, the grade six teacher started a dance party, is a complete idea on its own. So we combine them using the joining word so, and if you remember that rule, we always, always, always put the comma before the joining word. Here's another idea. The new class pet was a monkey, but it was disguised as a BSS student. I kind of want to see a little monkey in a BSS uniform. Very cute. The two ideas, the class pet was a monkey, is one idea. And the second idea is it was disguised as a BSS student. So take a moment right now, you can pause the recording and try and figure out where you would put the comma. It goes before the joining word, but. 
The sentence reads, the new class pet was a monkey, but it was disguised as a BSS student. Here are a few more to practice with. Take a moment, pause the recording, and see if you can figure out where you would place the comma. A special little hint, try to look for joining words. Joining words might be and, but, so, as, or because. So take a special careful look for those words and see where you would place the commas. Okay, welcome back. Let's look at the first one. The class decided to take a field trip to the moon because it would help their investigation of space. We would place the comma right before the because, because that's the joining word that brings together the two independent ideas. The first idea is the class decided to take a field trip to space, and the second is that they thought that the field trip to space would help their investigation of space. The second one. The class pet went missing, so Miss Grabowski started to cry. So is the joining word in that sentence. And the last one. Everyone knew they shouldn't have a monkey as a class pet, but they got one anyway. If you've noticed in the way that I've read these three sentences, there's a natural pause before the joining word. So that's another great way of trying to figure out where to place your commas when you're proofreading your work. If there's a pause, often that's where you would put a comma. Okay, let's look at a different way of using commas, separating items in a list. This one, most of us as grade six writers are pretty good at, but I'm gonna show you um, a tricky example of when some of us don't know when to use a comma in a list. Here are three example sentences. Mia the math mutt loves cuddles, belly scratches, and long walks. So we would put the first comma between cuddles and belly scratches because those are two different things that Mia the math mutt loves. Now, there's this thing called the Oxford comma, and you would put it before the and. Although, in this situation, it is also grammatically correct to leave the comma out. It's a personal choice. Some people were taught to always put it before the and. That's how I was taught in school. But some people weren't. As long as you're consistent in your writing, both are okay. However, there are some situations where you have to put it before the end. Let's look at that with this next one. For breakfast, I had eggs, toast, and orange juice. Now, without that comma before the end, it reads that you had toast and orange juice together, like orange juice on your toast, which is just weird and bizarre, and no one would do that. So the comma between toast and orange juice tells the reader that toast and orange juice are two separate things, not something together. This next one makes it really super clear. We invited the ninjas, Miss Kirsch and Miss Campbell. So if we were putting items in a list, we would say we invited the ninjas, Miss Kirsch and Miss Campbell. The way that this sentence reads is that you invited three separate groups of people. The ninjas are one group, Miss Kirsch is another person, and Miss Campbell is another person that was invited. But if you don't put the comma before the and, then it reads, we invited the ninjas, Miss Kirsch and Miss Campbell. The way that this sentence is reading now is that Miss Kirsch and Miss Campbell are ninjas. Both could be correct, it just depends on what you're intending for your reader.